I woke up this morning in Philadelphia, having gone up yesterday afternoon to see the Chinese Lantern Festival, which is going on through August. I recommend it to you. Uh, but if there's anybody in the room who's wiser than I am, which is to say all of you probably, you're probably thinking, who in their right mind would go anywhere near Philadelphia in the week of the 4th of July? And you would be right. Half of the world and all of the world's tourists, it seems, are in the center of Philadelphia right now around Independence Hall, which is about where I was going to. And it, it was certainly, I, I lived in Philadelphia for a year. I'm used to what it's like. You'd think I would have known. I know what the traffic and the congestion are like under the best conditions. You can only imagine what they are like in the week of the 4th of July. So while I was saying things that the clergy probably shouldn't say as I tried to drive to where my hotel was, I did at least have time to stop and think again about this lesson from Sunday that was still fairly fresh in my mind, and this idea of all the people who are pressing in around Jesus as he goes from the sea to the house of the leader of the synagogue. And it occurred to me that that, that group probably was, was very similar to the group who are in Philadelphia now. They had all come there for a reason. They weren't, they, they, they'd all come to see Jesus, whatever their reason may have been. Surely, even if every one of them came with some sort of idea of having an authentic experience of God, there must have been a great diversity among them, where they came from, what their experiences were, what it was they needed in their lives at that moment. There must have been a, a huge variety of thoughts going on in their heads as they were present when this miraculous thing happened in the midst of the crowd. <clears throat> You'll know that one of my favorite games to play in Bible study is what happened next, what, did, what happened next in the lives of these people. It isn't too hard to imagine what happened next for the life of the woman who was healed or the child who was revived. But plainly, they're not the only targets of these miracles. Everybody who was around would have seen and would have known what had happened. And you have to ask, what did they take away from it? What, what, how were they changed by having experienced this? Just as all these people who are in Philadelphia now who are having some experience of what this holiday is for Americans at least, will go away with some new understanding, we hope. That, of course, is where this comes back to you and to me also, because we also are present, not simply at the 4th of July, but at every miracle that God does in our midst. And we would be fools to imagine that God does not continually do miracles in our midst. And yet, how often are we in the crowd and are so preoccupied by whatever it was that brought us there that we fail to notice? How often are we so preoccupied that we fail to take away what it was that God intended for each of us to see, to experience the way we're meant to be moved by these things that happen. One of the difficulties for modern Christians who live in the sort of post-1960s era is that it can seem very unfair that one person is healed and another person is not. The key, I think, is always to remember that when a miracle happens, absolutely everyone who is in any proximity to it is transformed in some way, if only we will acknowledge it, notice it, and allow it to happen to us. When's the last time you saw a miracle happen? Worse question than that, more dangerous question. When was the last time a miracle happened right next to you and you didn't even notice? I ask this question of myself as much as anyone else, just to be clear. Our goal, perhaps, in being in the crowd is not necessarily to be the center of the action, but at least to notice the action happening, to recognize that God has done something powerful right there in front of us. We also are meant to be changed by it. So, dear friends, once again today, perhaps we're only in the crowd. Perhaps we're not the main character. And yet God has acted powerfully here in our midst as well. Let us notice it and let us give thanks. Amen.